guys, welcome back. This is Randy here at Landtac, and in this video, we are going to kind of do a deep dive into the Landtac Dragon. So we're gonna talk about the history about this whole product. This is actually the first Landtac product uh, as a company. We're gonna talk about some of the design theory that goes into this. We're also gonna talk about testing and the manufacturing of the Dragon, and then cover some of the variations that you have available. We have lots of different options and some that we're working on of the Landtac Dragon. So let's get right into it. All right, so before we get into the Dragon, we should kind of remind ourselves we've got to go back, you know, a little bit more than a decade ago. Back when muzzle brakes were more simple, there, again, remember, this is a time when there wasn't very many three-port, definitely not very many four-port muzzle brakes on the market. Lantac basically approached the market with the idea that what if we could... What if we could take a muzzle brake and increase the efficiency? So traditional muzzle brakes have a really thick first wall on that first, we'll call it port or baffle, right? And all of that energy is dispersed in that first wall. The bore line is also very tight. So if you had a 5.56 muzzle brake, for example, that the bore diameter, right, of that first chamber was tight across the whole thing. So what that translated to was a whole bunch of energy being dispersed in that first baffle. And realistically, that was by design, especially if you were someone who was running back then a traditional kind of baffle suppressor. That This is, again, an era when not all the suppressors were made out of, you know, Stellite or Inconel or Cobalt or whatever, you know what I mean? So a lot of stainless cans and preserving the life of your suppressor was important. So they wanted to kind of disperse a lot of energy in that way. Lantac's approach was, what if I could make it smoother? What if I could make it just as flat and smooth, but less aggressive, potentially less concussive, and just better at dispersing energy across the board as, as the round is passing through all of the ports. And this is what we came up with. So if you look closely at the Lantac Dragon, one of the first things you, you might notice is that there's obviously these three ports on the side here. So a lot of people think, well, that, that's a three port muzzle brake. Now there are the vertical ports, but if you notice the first set of vertical ports, they're actually behind the first port the, or the first opening or impingement surface, this, this basically hole on the side here. Those first two ports are actually in an internal chamber. So you have the muzzle threads and there is a chamber where those first ports bleed gas off vertically before they start bleeding gas off horizontally out the side, right? So you, in a way, the Lantac Dragon is a four port muzzle device, but uh, just basically looking at it, a lot of people think it's a three port, uh, you know, muzzle brake. It's actually a lot going on in the design. Next, you might notice if you're looking carefully at the bore diameter of the opening between each chamber, that the very front uh, diameter you'll notice is, is basically your standard 5.56 or 223 hole, right? For, for 5.56 or 223 guns, right? But then if you look at the hole diameter on the chamber behind it, you'll notice it's a little bit larger as well as the chamber behind that. So what Lantac is essentially doing is the opening starts large in your first chambers and eventually chokes down. And the reason behind the design theory of that idea is that gas doesn't just all escape. All of your energy just doesn't fly out in your first port, but basically breaks up as it basically subsequently travels between each chamber, resulting in a more efficient kind of smoother muzzle break as you're pulling the trigger. Lastly, a major feature that you'll notice on pretty much all of the Dragons is a little bit of the three-prong design on the front here, and that's really just to help with flash mitigation. We've actually done plenty of testing to prove out that those prongs actually do mitigate flash. We've actually compared the, the muzzle brake against competition to see where they are at uh, in terms of flash, and we're gonna talk about that next. So some of the early testing that was done on the Dragon first was getting a rifle in a sled in a controlled environment with a remote trigger, as well as a system for us to measure recoil. So when it came to recoil, we really had to test out the theory of if this is basically going to disperse energy more efficiently. So as the rifle is in the sled and a zero is kind of measured for all of the different com competitors, the, the trigger is pulled and then we were graphing basically the muzzle 
rise against the backdrop, right? Against the grid style backdrop and graphing the chart of what the rifle is doing without any person kind of imposing on the test results, right? And what we found is that essentially the Dragon, all of its energy was basically uh, dispersed and it returned back to its zero point in roughly about half the time against most of the competitors at that time. So what that meant is that your rifle, when it's firing, all of that energy and muzzle climbing and that, that motion that you would experience when you pull the trigger is actually reduced to about half. And what that equated to was a more efficient muzzle brake design that basically kept your gun flatter and kept it smooth in a shorter amount of time. Next thing that we did was also test flash performance, as I said earlier, and we did actually have comparisons between muzzle brakes from com com the competition and just shooting in a dark room and measuring lux output and looking at high speed cameras. We could determine that actually because of how the gas is dispersed more efficiently, it did reduce flash, right? So ultimately what the testing recorded was a shorter total recoil impulse, a less aggressive and less violent recoil impulse as well as reduced flash when it came to the competition. And that is why today we have so much feedback from customers, three gunners, and people who like to shoot aggressively with firearms, as well as precision shooters. The Lantac Dragon does a fantastic job at keeping the gun very flat, keeping recoil very smooth, and a lot of people like it. All right, next let's talk about some of the design variations when it comes to the Lantac Dragon. As the market has shifted to a lot of people shooting suppress, suppressor requirements per different manufacturers has to have kind of changed and updated. So there are slight variations in the design of the different dragons. But the overall recipe and theory behind why the dragon works so well as a muzzle brake basically stands true. If you have the Wolfman, for example, this nine millimeter dragon, you'll notice that there's only two ports. You will also notice it's a much shorter compact muzzle device. Well, it's intended for the Wolfman silencer or suppressor, right? And there are requirements on that initial in the mounting system, essentially requirements for how long a muzzle device can be. We do a pretty good job at working with silencer manufacturers to make sure that we're not basically doing things that won't work with the suppressors that they're intended to. But that is why you're going to see some design variation. You'll see a little bit of variation. For example, you got the old, uh, two lug uh, mounting system of the old Gemtex here, right? You've got ASR right here, and you've also got Chemo. We've got Wolfman, and we have some more coming. We have a prototype Xeno mount here, for example, and you can expect more options of the Dragon to, to come as well. But again, the design solution or the design recipe is consistent across the board. So even though some designs might be a little bit shorter, you're still going to get the vertical ports done in more or less the same way. And you're still going to get the, the variation in bore sizes that kind of change per port as the round is passing through across the board because it's such a fantastic design and we're really happy with it and it works really well. All right, guys, so that is the Lantac Dragon. So if you're someone who is looking for a muzzle brake, uh, me personally, I'm a big fan of muzzle brakes and I have been for years and that's really because I shoot with suppressors. So if I'm concerned about flash, I essentially just put a suppressor on. If I'm not concerned about flash and I'm not concerned about, uh, you know, my buddies and I'm not concerned about making noise, I'll go ahead and run a dragon, right? Now the dragons do have, they are a muzzle brake in the truest sense, they do have a bit of concussion, but they also do a fantastic job at keeping your gun flat. All in all, muzzle brakes help with follow-up shots. They definitely help if you're doing something uh, precision shooting. They're kind of a requirement for people who shoot really long ranges. And that's because when you pull the trigger, you wanna get right back on sight picture. You definitely wanna see your, your rounds impact and you wanna see that splash. That's really impossible with really big, high pressure calibers without kind of having a muzzle brake or something to help reduce the recoil impulse of the rifle. On the other side of the spectrum, if you're someone who likes to shoot fast and train fast, muzzle brakes do a fantastic job at making sure your gun is flat and consistent and smooth, and we're big fans. So that's the Lantac Dragon. Let us know what you think. Let us know what other design variations you might like to see in the comments, and we will see you next time.